By the early 1930s, America's economy is pretty much in the toilet. We've sunk into a pretty bad economic depression. How did this affect Americans' lives? Well, stick around. That's what we're going to talk about today on Mr. E's Classroom. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. E here. Today, we're going to talk about life during the Great Depression. Specifically, we're going to try to answer a question, what was life like for Americans during the Great Depression? Seems like a pretty easy, simple question. Grab your pencil and paper, get ready to take some notes. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a good answer. Let's start off by taking a look at what life was like for people in rural areas of the country. Things didn't really change a whole lot for them. Most people in rural areas of the country were poor before the Depression hit, and guess what? They were poor during the Depression. It wasn't really a big change for a lot of these people. There were some farmers that were uh, affected a little bit more than others. We've talked about the Dust Bowl before, especially that area of the Great Plains. They were really hard hit. Somewhere around about 400,000 farms wind up being foreclosed on during the Depression. A lot of farmers in this situation turned back to tenant farming because, you know, it worked so well the last time we did it during Reconstruction. As I just mentioned, people living out in the Dust Bowl area were probably the hardest hit. Of those, the people living in the state of Oklahoma took a brunt of that natural disaster. A good number of farmers from that area in Oklahoma decided they weren't going to stick around. About 300,000 farmers from Oklahoma started a westward migration to what they called the land of milk and honey. A lot of them saw California and the West Coast as their salvation. Farmers and their families in this situation become known as Okies because of where they're from, Oklahoma. And a lot of these people wind up becoming migrant farmers. They would start in the southern part of the west coast and kind of work their way up north with the seasons. Life in urban areas during the Depression was a totally different story though. During the 1920s, a lot of the urban areas saw a lot of prosperity. So when the Depression hit, it hit them pretty hard. Remember that unemployment was around 25%. One out of every four people didn't have a job. And remember what we said about having a job and being in the cities. If you don't have a job in the city, you don't have a way of surviving. On top of that, those people that did have jobs took a big hit as well. A lot of wages got cut in order for businesses to survive. A lot of hours also got cut. So you still may have a great hourly wage, but if you're only working two or three hours a day, that's not really going to cut it. A lot of banks foreclosed on homes, which left a lot of people homeless. You also started to see a lot of bread lines and soup kitchens start to form in cities. There were some people that had some stuff during the Depression, and they chose to try to help those that didn't. This is where bread lines and soup kitchens come into play. This photo of a bread line right here will kind of kick off our uh, life in the cities during the Depression, depressing photo montage. I would mentioned in an earlier video that President Hoover really took a lot of heat for what was happening during the Depression. People
people in the cities kind of took this to a, a new level in giving Hoover crap over what was going on. Three terms start to show up in the early parts of the Depression that really kind of emphasize how much people were not happy with President Hoover. The first being the term Hooverville. A Hooverville is basically just a homeless camp where people have kind of banded together to try to survive. You saw Hoovervilles pop up everywhere, in every major city. Anywhere there's a big public space where they could basically set up a tent city or a, a shanty city built out of scraps that could be found. Another one was the Hoover Blanket. A lot of people were left with absolutely nothing during the Depression. A Hoover Blanket was just an old newspaper that people used to try to keep themselves warm. You may have seen on a, an old cartoon or something the, 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 the bum or the hobo sleeping on a park bench covered in newspapers. Well, it turns out that's actually a very real thing that happened during the Depression. Those newspapers were about the best blankets they could come up with. The last term was called a Hoover flag. This is something that people did to, to really show that they had hit rock bottom. If you had absolutely nothing, you would reach in and you would turn your pockets inside out. This represented how broke you really were. When you hit rock bottom and had absolutely nothing left, you flew your Hoover flag. People would recognize this and if they had a little bit, they'd try to share with you, but that's nothing you could really count on. This depression had a huge psychological toll on America. Nearly two million men left their families and homes to try to find work. You saw homes and families being broken apart. Millions of children were forced to quit school. A lot of them even ran away from home because they didn't want to be a burden on their parents. A lot of people in our country flat out just lost the will to live. We saw suicide rates in our country rise by almost 30% during the Great Depression. We can't really talk about the 1930s and the Great Depression without mentioning hobos. This goes back to that psychological toll the Depression had on people. Roughly about 300,000 people, mostly men but not exclusively, turned into hobos. A hobo is just a person that literally just wanders around because they have nothing better to do. They don't have a place to stay, they don't have a job they have to do. So about 300,000 people turn to this life of just wandering around the country. They'd take, take advantage of people's generosity when they could. They'd come up with other ways to survive if they had to. Most of them got around by doing what was known as riding the rails. They'd jump up on a train, they'd jump on top of a train, and this is how they'd get around the country. The problem is that was kind of a dangerous thing to do because it's very easy, especially when it started to get colder, especially if it was uh, bad weather, uh, to slip off one of those railroad cars. There were 25,000 recorded deaths on railroad property during the Great Depression. These are the people that we know of that died on trains by being hobos. Think about how many, how many thousands we probably didn't know about. There's one incident that a lot of historians kind of refer to as the, the rock bottom for America during the Depression that we need to talk about. It's called the Bonus Army. During the Great War, anybody who served overseas when the war was over was, was promised a bonus. They were promised a dollar a day for every day they were not in the United States. Well, these veterans never saw their bonus. It kept being put off and put off and put off and eventually they got tired and they started to march towards Washington DC to demand that they get that bonus that they were promised. A huge Hooverville was set up right in the smack dab heart of Washington DC and the bonus army, these veterans that were promised this little bit extra for serving, refused to leave until they got the money that they deserved and quite frankly, really needed. As you can imagine, having a group of homeless veterans camped out right in front of your capital doesn't really make America look like the best place. President Hoover actually ordered 
the removal of this bonus army. He tasked a guy named General Douglas M MacArthur with getting rid of them. Well, the way MacArthur did this was through tear gas and bayonets. Basically, they threw a bunch of tear gas into the Hooverville and charged in with bayonets, not necessarily intentionally trying to hurt anybody, but trying to scare them off. Unfortunately, in this removal attempt, a baby wound up getting killed and a child wound up becoming blind because of the tear gas that was used. This really didn't set well with the American people. It really didn't make America in general look really good, and it kind of signaled the end for Hoover. After this incident, after word got out that Hoover was the one that ordered the removal, his reputation and his political career was pretty much ruined at that point. This signaled for America that it was time for a serious, serious change. I really only have two takeaways for you from this video. Number one, remember that rural life was pretty depressing because of the Dust Bowl. Takeaway number two is that urban life was really depressing because of high unemployment. There you go, guys. Life during the Depression. Hopefully you got great notes. Hopefully you'll be ready for the quiz when it happens in class. And as always, till next time, remember, don't stop learning.